Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. Today we are going to learn how to set up what I like to call the poor man's VPN. Now I know we've done some videos on using Tor with proxy chains and anonymizing your DNS through opennicproject.org. Uh, today we're going to use relatively most of the same tools except for Tor. Instead, we're going to be using SSH, which is an encrypted tunnel, to set up an SSH proxy to tunnel our uh, connections through a remote free shell service. So I'll show you how to set that up. Okay, so fire up Kali Linux. And, you know, one thing before we begin is I know a lot of people like to use VPN services, but there's two things. VPN services cost some money. Uh, and they're not as secure as they say they are. Um, while the tunnel might be secure, it uh, adds a lot of overhead, and it depends on what protocol they're using, whether they're using IPsec or PPTP, point-to-point uh, -point tunneling protocol, or OpenVPN, something like that. It adds a lot of overhead to your packets, and things will be much, much slower. Uh, also, the other downside to that is you are relying on some other host to provide this VPN service to you. Now, the bad part about that is, is you're connecting from your public IP address to that VPN service. And so while your uh, connection and your packets are encrypted between you and the VPN host, when you go to the outside world, you're only using their public IP address, right? And so you have to usually log into a VPN with a username and password. So if, say, for instance, you went out and somebody, you know, said, hey, somebody was, uh, you know... Um, doing something and they, they could basically trace you back to that VPN service provider and then they can check their logs to see who logged in with that username and password from what IP address, right? So this is not really a big deal to people like us that are ethical hackers and we're doing this for a living, but uh, you know, if you want to do some recon work or something like that, um, you know, it may help to have this set up. So the first things first, uh, what we're going to need to do is open up a web browser and I recommend you do this with a proxy to start off with. Uh, we're going to be using cjb.net which offers a free shell service which is basically a free remote uh, SSH server that you can use. Now on here in particular the, the difference between this and many other free shell providers is that uh, while you're connecting over a secure SSH tunnel to that uh, shell provider, when you're making your requests out like web surfing or something like that, it's using Tor on their side to randomly change and anonymize the IP address that goes to the outside world. Then of course it comes back in and then it's forwarded back to you through your secure SSH tunnel. So let's uh, open up a web browser here. And again, I recommend you use a proxy with this only because when I did my registration uh, for a free shell, when it sent me my verification link, I, link, I clicked on it, and uh, when it sent me back my username, password, and my uh, domain name to log into via SSH, it also included my public IP address. So if you're uh, really looking to stay very, very anonymous, you should definitely use a proxy to sign up for this service. So just uh, navigate over to cjb.net. And once you get here on the page, uh, you notice they also offer a VPN proxy service, which we're not going to be using. Uh, click on Shell Accounts here at the very top. And so the very first line here says, how do I sign up? Just uh, click here to sign up. So click on that. Now select a username. You can enter in anything you want, a unique username. You know, of course, I chose Afterburn. Um, it's also going to ask you for what your uh, email address is, and by now you should probably have something set up, uh, you know, as a spam email for registrations and stuff like that, so you don't get inundated with spam on your regular uh, email you use every day. Also here you're going to want to put in a password, pretty pretty much make it a secure password, guys, right? So you want to use like capital letters and numbers and things like that. I don't know if they accept, you know, like uh, you know pound symbols or something like that, but just use capitals and numbers. So um, basically verify your password, leave this shell as uh, under select shell as bash, hit continue. It's going to send you the verification link in the email. Uh, to my Gmail, it took about five minutes or so. Click on the verification link again using a proxy, uh, and then it's going to, in another few minutes, send you your login credentials plus the domain name you should be logging into. So once that's all done, we can go ahead and close out our browser. So now we have to make a couple of changes. I know that you know, we did discuss things about Tor and proxy chains and using the Tor buddy script and things like that. And, and all those things are great if you don't mind doing a little bit of manual work. Uh, however, 
you know, using OpenNix, um, you know, public DNS servers that aren't logging servers or anything like that, uh, you had to manually edit your resolve.config file in the etc directory every time you restarted your machine because the, the, the changes weren't persistent. They didn't save, right? So the easy way to go about that is um, Kali Linux includes what's called a network manager, and it's a GUI uh, area to manage your IP addresses, your DNS servers, your wireless adapters, VPN services, all, all things like that. So up here at the very top right, uh, you're going to see two little computer screens here. If you hover over it, it's going to say it's your network connections. Just right click on that and go to edit connections. So inside here, uh, if you're using wired like an ethernet cable, you're going to obviously want to choose a wired tab. If you're using wireless, you're going to want to choose a wireless tab. And uh, there should be an entry in here already and click edit. So we're using a wired connection here. Uh, so I'll choose that, hit edit. Now I've already went ahead and made these changes prior to uh, starting the recording here, so we'll just go over it briefly. Click on IP version 4 settings if you're using IP version 4. If you're using IP version 6, obviously click on the IPv6 settings tab. So in the method here, it's probably going to be automatic DHCP by default uh, from when you set, set up Kali Linux. Okay, so change that to manual. And then in here under addresses, each one of these lines is separate. So if you click in here, you see you can you can edit it. So type in your IP address that you want static for this machine. Type in the subnet mask. Uh, it should automatically generate the CIDR for you, like a slash 24 or something like that. Um, type in your gateway, of course. And then here's where you type in your DNS servers, right? So pop in your DNS servers, separate them by a comma, and you should be good to go. So if you had two, you enter in, you know, the first one, a comma, and then the second one, and if you had third one, a comma, and the third one, of course. So we're only going to be using two here in this scenario. In fact, as of this recording today, uh, Open NIC project was having some issues with their DNS servers, and I jumped into their IRC channel and I talked to them about it, and they were just having some issues with one of the uh, main root certificate node or the root DNS nodes uh, had some hardware issues, so they're working to resolve that right now. So I anticipate by tomorrow this should be, uh, you know, back up and running. In any case, I did manage to find two of them that weren't affected by it. So nonetheless, uh, you enter those in and you hit save. And you can close this out. Then what I like to do just to restart the networking is right click on that same icon and uncheck enable networking. And you'll see a little red uh, X come up there. And then right click on it and go to enable networking. So now it says it's disconnected. It's renewing. It's getting an, it's uh, setting up the IP address for you. And it should go to connect it here in just a moment. There we go. Okay, so the very next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to edit your proxy chain's config file. Now, you guys should be used to this by now, but uh, I'm actually going to explain some of the VI commands. We had one of our YouTube su subscribers get pretty upset that, uh, you know, I didn't explain the commands in detail here, and so they managed to mess up their uh, proxy chain's config file, and you know, led to some chaos. So uh, we posted more about that on our forums over at uh, learnnetsec.com. In the forum there, we posted some VI stuff, uh, you know, for the uh, VI editor that you use inside of uh, Terminal. Now, guys, I mean, as you noticed probably already, I use a lot of terminal commands, even text editors, because that's really my personal preference. That's what I'm used to. That's what I've been doing for eons, it seems like. So uh, you're free to, uh, you know, use a GUI to manage your text files or edits and stuff like that. I just like doing it this way. So anyway, in the terminal, you just uh, type in VI to use the Vim uh, text editor, and then to the file, the path, etc, and then proxy chains.conf, right? So of course, like in same in the other videos here, dynamic chains is used, and that's uncommented, and then we commented out strict chains here. We also commented out um, proxy DNS requests because obviously that's a bad idea since it only used one uh, IP address or a proxy server. Scrolling down all the way here to the bottom, uh, anything you had in here already as far as set up with Tor, proxy chains, you know, Tor buddy, all that stuff, it's commented all out, enter in the same syntax, SOX4 space 127.0.0.1 and then whatever port. See now, it's not like a traditional proxy where you have to set up port 9050 for like Tor or 1080 for a regular SOX proxy or something like that. You can make up whatever port you want. So if you want the port to be 9999, you could do that too. I just used 8001 for simplicity. So once you have that in there, 
uh, and, and you know to go over the VI commands basically uh, if you want to make changes to a file and you want to insert some text or delete some text you have to hit I I for insert and if you notice here at the bottom left hand corner it will always tell you what mode you're in right so we just typed I and now we are in insert mode so if I wanted to add some characters here I could right backspace to get rid of them so on and so forth anytime you want to remove yourself from a mode or get out of a mode like insert or something like that edit mode I call it you can just hit the escape key now you notice at the bottom left here there is no more mode being shown so we're out of it we can't we can't type in here at all you can see I'm I'm trying <laughs> but uh, yeah so anyway whenever you want to uh, save your changes and quit the file or get out of the editing part of the file you just type in uh, shift colon and then it's W for right Q for quit if you made a change and you're not sure about the change or you screwed something up you added some extra characters or something you don't you want to just go back and try to re-edit it again uh, you would just do colon and then Q with an excla exclamation point and hit enter and that will override any changes and revert it back to the way it was prior to editing it but in this case we're happy with our changes so we're just gonna WQ and hit enter right so now the very next step is you need to grab your login information from uh, cjb.net okay when they emailed it to you so I've already entered in the command here so what we're gonna explain it uh, step by step here so SSH means you're creating an SSH connection you're gonna use the SSH client that's built into Linux and you're going to uh, SSH into a remote server right the TAC capital D, which is very important, it has to be capital D, sets up the actual proxy that you're going to use. Now, followed by this is the port, right? Port 8001. Now, if you remember, we just set that up in the proxy chains config file as 8001, since we'll be using proxy chains to tunnel our applications through the proxy, through this remote shell host, and to their outside world, right? So then after that, you're going to type in your username, at, and then whatever uh, host name they give you. Mine just so happens to be shell.cjb.net. Yours might be that too, or it might be something different. So just keep that in mind that you'll have to change that accordingly uh, to whatever they give you. Okay. So the default port is 22, so we don't have to worry about putting in the TAC P switch for ports uh, and just hit enter. So the very first time that you're doing this, it's going to ask you if you want to accept the RSA key fingerprint, and you're just going to type yes, yes, and then enter, obviously. Okay, so then um, the next thing you're going to want to do is enter in your password. And hit enter. So now you're dropped into the shell, and you should see that represented by username at shell. So mine's afterburn at shell. If I want to type in a command here, I can do uptime. Okay, so now that's all set up. So let's go back over to our other tab here. So now let's say we want to use Ice Weasel. We want to do some information gathering. Uh, so much the same as in the other uh, videos we mentioned about using proxy chains to tunnel your applications through a proxy, even if they don't support proxies, uh, we can go ahead and do that here. So the command is proxy chains, and then the application, in this case, Ice Weasel. But you can use Nmap through this and stuff like that and then the website I think IP chickens down today for right now uh, so we're gonna use what is my IP dot com now this website doesn't give you your host name or anything like that so unfortunately we have to bypass that but you can see here that it's coming up and obviously guys this is not my WAN IP address okay this is something different so now we want to go ahead and open up another tab and we want to go check our DNS to see if it's leaking. So DNS uh, leak test.com. And now guys, keep in mind that when you're using proxies, especially through an SSH proxy, much like Tor, sometimes you might be in the middle of an IP chain, that proxy may not be responding on their side on, on Tor. So just uh, refresh the page a couple of times till it comes up. And of course, now you can see we have a completely different IP address from what we first had. It first said we had 172, now DNS leak check is reporting that we're in the Netherlands. So that's good. It's it's randomly automatically changing. And that's probably why when we went to the page the first time it died, because it was in the middle of changing proxies, because that proxy was dead in the chain. So click check for DNS leaks now. 
And you could see here, and if you noticed when we edited our, uh, our DNS names, that's my first DNS server IP address that I put in there. Here's the host name, paranoia.virtual-dope.com. It's hosted over a LI node. And if you guys want cheap VPSs, I mean like super cheap VPSs starting at like 20 bucks a month for like one gig of RAM and like really good storage and speed and stuff, check that out. Linode's pretty cool. Okay, I think it's linode.com or something. You could, I'll put a link in the description, but you can Google it if you wanted to. Well, anyway, that's not my real DNS server, obviously, right? So if we went back over to whatismyip.com and we refreshed again, we can see now that we have a different IP address, right? 78.63. Same thing with DNS leak check. Let's go back to the main page here. And look, it says our IP address is 5.135.54.66, and supposedly it says we're in, nobody knows. So quick check for DNS leaks now, and of course the DNS server is the same, right? So from uh, opennickproject.org, I chose a DNS server that's non-logging, meaning it doesn't keep any logs. So that's something that you definitely want to take precedence over. You want to actually do your little bit of research and choose DNS servers that are relatively close to you but the most important thing is that they are not logging any connections okay so basically that's pretty much it now we're also going to use this example in our advanced tutorial set and you can see here in the terminal obviously it went ahead and went through all of that uh, that goodness right so um, in our advanced series, what we're going to wind up learning is bypassing firewalls, as I've mentioned before. We're going to do firewall and IDS, IPS evasion techniques. I'm going to show you guys some fancy stuff with Nmap in that uh, scenario. And uh, the reason why I mention SSH proxying is because we're going to do one example where uh, I have a PFSense firewall set up on that actual uh, segment that's another public IP address that uh, I have access to okay and that's where all the VM images are behind that so what we're gonna do is uh, that firewall only has port 22 open for SSH and obviously we know SSH 9 out of 10 times is on a Linux or a Unix machine right so then we start scanning at that and see if there's any vulnerabilities in that service well it's not gonna be all the time that port 22 is open you know widely it may be changed up to you know 6222 or something uh, or they may just have that as a web server or some sort of file server or something like that that has public access and that's the only machine on the network that has public access and that that's the only port that it has open right so we're gonna scan for vulnerabilities and if we can't find vulnerabilities we're gonna try to brute force it and log in if we're successful and we manage to get a shell on, on that uh, machine, even if it's a user level shell and a non-root shell, meaning just an average user, that's fine. Because we're really just using that as a proxy relay into the internal network, thus bypassing the firewall and all of its in, inbound or uh, ingress um, filtering, right? And then we're gonna use that machine that we have access to that's on their LAN to search out to the LAN and find all of the other machines that are on that subnet and then we are going to launch scans from our machine through that compromised Unix host and enumerate the rest of the internal network and then launch the attacks through that into that internal network after we have enumerated it. Right, so we call that SSH pivoting or proxy pivoting through SSH. Much the same as you saw in, in the other video uh, that I did the quick little me hacking the LAN here. Uh, we set up pivoting through Armitage to attack other machines from that first compromised machine. Well, so here's the thing. If we compromise the Unix machine and then we went ahead and found a vulnerable Windows machine, we use now that Unix machine to forward and create a route to that compromised Windows machine and then we use that compromised Windows machine to compromise all the other machines that's called pivoting okay so and then the beautiful thing about this is you can run Metasploit through this SSH proxy so as long as you put your static public IP address or your public IP address uh, as the uh, local um, host address in in the exploit that you're firing off you're okay because it's, it's going to go through back through their firewall right because they don't do any egress egress is out ingress is in they don't do any egress filtering at all and even if they did let's say they egress filtered port uh, 
all the ports except for port 80 for web surfing because their you know employees have to web surf or whatever or port 53 for dns we can use that port to send the outside reverse tcp connection back to us create that encrypted channel and send the payload back to them you see so there's really no stopping that attack right uh, and even if they had all of their firewall uh, rules for inbound lockdown there was no open ports it wasn't responding to icmp ping nothing right we can simply use social engineering to trick a user on a network to opening a malicious or a booby trapped pdf file which sends a reverse tcp shell to us and then we are in on their network without them even knowing and we're enumerating the rest of their network while they're home eating dinner with their families right so um yeah, that's what we're going to get into in the advanced series. Uh, the next part of the uh, information, um, not information, but the next part of the phases of network security uh, series that we're doing here, we've already done the information gathering one, we've done the introduction. So part three is going to be actually rolling up your sleeves and doing real intensive recon, port scanning, enumeration, service uh, enumeration, uh, fact checking, double checking uh, your results and stuff like that. So um, we're going to set up our VM server on the LAN. So this will emulate as if we're doing an internal audit. If you notice, if you remember, there's two audits. There's an external audit and an internal audit. So we are going to emulate in that series the internal audit because that's actually easier to get you guys to understand um, and get you familiar with working with some of the tools we're going to be working with. Now these very same tools, uh, for the majority of it, we can use from the outside world in, if we're doing a remote scan or, or an outside uh, penetration test, okay? So stay tuned for those videos, guys. Uh, that's about it for now. Uh, be sure to check out our website. Uh, the forums are getting crazy. There's a lot of people in there posting and signing up, which is awesome. Uh, keep a tab on the blog there on the website as well, learnnetsec.com. And as always, like, share, and subscribe to our videos here on YouTube. Uh, join us on Twitter at LearnNetSec. Uh, we've got a lot of interesting uh, friends on uh, Twitter. Uh, Kevin Mitnick's one of them. There's there's a whole bunch of guys. Uh, Nmaps on there. We, we're uh, acquaintances with them. So uh, check that out. There's a lot of interesting retweets and tweets going on back and forth. It's pretty crazy. Uh, check that out. And uh, again, we're on Facebook too. Uh, so check us out there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.